Welcome to the Building a Blog in Go series. In this exercise, we're going to focus on rendering raw markdown. So what I mean by that is we're going to focus on building a web server that allows us to type in the URL of a blog post, and it will go look for a markdown file with that slug name or whatever we're using to identify it. And then it's going to just take the contents of that file and display it on the screen. It's not going to turn that into HTML or anything like that. Um, but the goal here is just to get that first few things working. So this exercise um, is going to assume that you have some basic Go experience. That's not just this, this video. This is going to sort of be for all these videos walking through this entire exercise. Um, so I just want to go ahead and just give you a heads up of what to expect, I guess. So just so you know, I'm not going to go into a lot of details about how HTTP, HTTP servers work, um, how routing works, uh, especially the new routing in the Go 1.22's uh, servmux. I will use it. I will maybe talk about it a little bit. Um, but if it's something you want to learn more about, I suggest checking out other blog posts or looking for other resources. Um, that's just really not the purpose of this particular exercise. The point of this exercise is to look or walk through the process of building a blog and thinking through all those steps, assuming that you have some experience using these different tools inside of the Go standard library. If you've gone through Gopher sizes, um, you'll probably enjoy the pace of this. It's going to be a little bit similar, but maybe a little bit faster paced. Um, so this is kind of like a good follow up for after that is, is what I would guess. And if you don't have any experience using like the net HTTP package in Go, or if you don't know how web servers work or anything with Go, um, the samples from my course web development with Go, uh, there's like 20 videos in the samples and they go through most of the introductory type stuff and we'll get you a good start on how that all works. Um, there's a lot more details there and it breaks it down a lot more. Um, there's also a bunch of web, you know, blog posts and, and tutorials and stuff like that online that you can check out. So lots of options to look at. Uh, it's just not what I'm going to be covering here. Okay, so jumping into the exercise, the first thing I like to do is break down a project into manageable steps. And even though I've already broken this down into just trying to render the raw markdown, um, I'd like to break that down even further. And the first step is I just want to create a simple web server that renders some text. Um, I might pull the, uh, the, I'm going to call it the slug out of the URL. Um, so we have that as well and render that. And then once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and take a step back and set up an HTTP handler that can open up a file and render that raw markdown onto the, you know, onto the response for the, the user. So those are the two steps I'm going to be taking. And that's because I know how to build a simple web server and I can do that fairly, fairly quickly. So I'm going to focus on just getting all that out of the way. And then I can actually focus on the reading the files and doing all that other stuff. So uh, I guess I should add another step here is uh, zero create a go module and directory. Um, and that's because I, I need to initialize a lot of this stuff. So I probably should have added that as a step. I just sort of assumed that'd be part of the first step. Okay, so I'm going to do make der gulb. Um, this is just blog spelled backwards. Um, in the written version of this that I initially started doing, um, I think I called it John blog. Um, I'm just going to use something different so that I have a different repo for each one. Okay, so then I'm going to go into the gulb directory. I'm going to go mod init github.com slash John Calhoun slash gulb. Um, I have autocomplete there because I've already done this once and uh, had to redo the recording. Um, so once I have that, I'm also going to git init to initialize a git repository. And then I'm going to code this and open up this entire directory. Yep. I think I hid that. It's not what I meant to do. Give me one second. And I closed VS Code somehow. Awesome. All right, sorry about that. I'm not really sure why that decided to do what it did. Let me go ahead and make sure everything is good. Yep, okay. All right, so I have a directory. It now has um, its go.mod file is in here. This is going to be using go 1.22.4. Um, you don't need to be using this exact version, but I would recommend using anything go.1.22 or higher um, so that you have access to the uh, new servmux stuff that I'm going to be using. So with this repository created, um, I'm going to go ahead and start working on a main.go file. And this is just where I'm going to put all my source code until I get to a point where it makes sense to start breaking it into other source files. So package main, and then I'm going to do func main. Um, go ahead and inside of here, I'm going to create the new serve mux. And then I'm going to do mux.handle func. And I'm going to use the new routing. So I'm going to do get slash post slash slug. And I will talk about what a slug is here in a second. Get into the let GitHub Copilot 
auto complete some of this and then I'm going to talk about what needs changed and what's going on. Um, so I'm going to save this and you're going to notice that this is using Qi, uh, which is not what I'm using. Um, so I'm going to have to go ahead and replace that. This is one of the downsides to using something like Copilot is that it's going to be based off of um, a lot of source code at scene and this servmux stuff is newer so it's unlikely to have seen a lot of that. Okay, so I want to get the slug which is going to be similar to this. But with the new um, 1.22 changes, it's going to be r.path value, and then you pass in the name of the URL um, value that you're looking for. So in this case, I called it slug here, so I'm going to be passing in slug here. And then once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and just do post, and I'm just going to print out the slug name. I don't need all the other contents being printed out. And I'm using fprintf, so I'm printing it out to the response writer and just printing out this message that has the slug in it. So this entire thing is basically just setting up the path. Um, so it's going to be anything like slash post slash slash, uh, you know, some slug that's going to go there and it's going to look that up um, and use it to identify any markdown post we have or any blog post we have. Um, you've probably seen a lot of blogs that have something like this where the posts are posts slash um, hello world or maybe they're post slash how to boil eggs, um, different things like this. And this slug part is going to be a unique identifier that is used to sort of tell you what blog post it is, but it's also something that's a little bit user friendly when they're looking at the URL, they can kind of guess what's going on in that blog post. Um, so the main reason that we don't just use like an ID, like a numeric ID or, you know, like a UUID or something like that is that they just aren't very URL friendly. Um, you know, for a user, they're not going to tell them what they're about to see. Um, and I don't like to replace the ID entirely with the slug because sometimes people will change the slugs depending on the context. Um, trying to think of an example there are some like websites that have slugs for different things and the user might be able to change their slug so you don't necessarily want to replace an id with it so i think it's often just called a slug as you know it's kind of a similar type thing i don't know where the name slug came from though um one interesting thing here to main or mention is that i said that this slug is used so that you can um, see what's going on in the url there are other approaches to this uh, for instance if you've ever going to amazon and looked at different products uh, i'm going to go ahead and just pull up a product that I had a link to. Um, this is just a random dress. I just clicked something on the homepage of Amazon. Um, but one thing that's interesting here is that this part right after the amazon.com is actually not used for anything. So I could type whatever I want in here and it's going to go to the same page every single time. So what's happening is that it's using this last bit. Um, this part here is actually the ID of the product, I believe. And that's how it's looking up the product. And this part here in the front is just another way of making it so the URL can have useful information in it without, um, you know, without actually having to have that be the ID or anything like that. And the URL that I originally pasted is a lovely not pink dress. That's something that I replaced the text with, with a lovely not pink dress, because that's not what it was initially. Uh, I forget if I have it still in my URL. No, I don't have it up there. Um, but yeah, when you're looking at these products, that's something that can, that's another way to approach this is you can have a blog post do that. And then you can have IDs for each different blog post. Um, I like the slug approach for this because we can just have it map to the file names that we're going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and just make sure every slug is going to map to a markdown file. And later when we start reading markdown files from somewhere else, we can see if that still works or change it if we need to. Okay. So I need to finish this. Um, I need to do, if let's do air, it's going to be HTTP dot hand or to listen and serve. Let's do 30, 30 is the port. And our handler is going to be our serve mux. And then I'm going to say if error is not equal to nil, log.fatal. Then I'll close that and save this. So ideally, if this is all working, um, we should be able to go to pages like localhost 3030 slash post slash um, how to boil an egg. And it should pull the, pull the how to boil an egg slug out of the URL and render it onto our response. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, go run main.go. And then I will go here. I'm going to go to localhost 3030 slash post slash how to boil an egg. And you'll see here that it's pulling the how to boil an egg slug out of the URL. Okay, so that's all I wanted with that. Um, let's go ahead and focus on reading a file now. All right, so short term, I plan on reading these files from um, the local hard drive. And then long term, I'm going to probably start reading them from GitHub or somewhere else because I likely don't want to have to redeploy my application or push markdown files to a server every single time I change the blog posts. Um, I mean, maybe I can, but that's not really what I'm intending on doing. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this is I'm just going to go ahead and define an interface. And that interface is going to be used for reading 
Um, my goal is going to be to use this interface, anything that implements it, to read a blog post and to get its contents as long as I have the slug for that blog, uh, you know, for that blog post. So I'm going to call it a slug reader. It's going to be an interface, and then I'm going to call the method read. It's going to take a slug, which is a string, and it's going to return a string and an error. Um, it's very I need to fix that typo. It's very likely that I will get this interface wrong um, because I haven't actually implemented this. I haven't implemented it with both a, a file reader and with like a something reading from GitHub. Um, it's one of the reasons I generally don't like to encourage people to use interfaces right away. Um, I would typically say write your code to, you know, just sort of hard code, like reading it from the file system or whatever else the first time. Um, the second time you come through, uh, you could maybe try reading from GitHub or somewhere else. And as you get to that point, you can start to figure out what interface makes the most sense there. But in this case, I'm not really too worried about it because it's not going to be too hard to fix this if I need to. Um, and, you know, it's just a small bit of code. I don't mind rewriting it. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with the interface so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so I want to read markdown files. I have an interface to do it, but I don't actually have um, a file reader of any sort. That implements this. So I could either start by implementing a file reader or you know some something that implements a slug reader that reads from files, or I could start with the handler for that. Um, either one's completely valid. Uh, I say let's just go ahead and start with the handler. Um, so you can see like why defining the interface first might be useful. Um, actually, I take that back. I'm going to go ahead and start with the uh, file reader because if I don't and this is completely wrong, like it won't work with reading files, I want to know about that before I like you know, write all the rest of the code around that interface. So let's do file reader. It's going to be a struct. Um, for now, this can be an empty struct, but maybe later we'll have some information that is useful for inside of the struct, like uh, what directory to read from or something like that. So I'm going to call this, um, let's do file slug reader. I don't really, I think FR is going to be better than FSR. So file reader. And then we're going to do a read. It's going to take in a slug and it's going to return a string and an error. And it's going to be like this read function we have here. So I'm trying to make sure it matches that. Uh, I also have this as a pointer receiver, which I don't need. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Um, if it turns out I need that later, I can tweak things. But I don't see any reason to make it a pointer receiver when we don't need one. Okay, so in here, we're going to go ahead and read a file. So we're going to do f, comma, error. It's going to be os.open slug plus dot markdown because um, we're looking for whatever the name of the slug is we're going to assume that's the name of the file on the hard drive and we're going to assume it's saved as a markdown file let's we'll say if error is not equal to nil then in here we're going to return the error um, we could wrap it if we wanted but i think for now we can just return it if we do get a file we're going to defer f dot close because i want to make sure that this file actually gets closed um, and then in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and just read all the contents of the file and return that. So I'm going to say b, comma, error is going to be io.read all from f. And if error is not equal to nil, we'll return the empty string and error again. And then finally, we're going to return string b nil. Um, so what I'm doing here is read all is going to read all of the contents, it's going to give me a byte slice back. And whenever I get that back, I'm just going to cast that into a string whenever I return it, because that's the final output I want. I could have returned a byte slice here if I wanted instead, um, but I know I'm probably going to want, well, I'm just going to go ahead and just make it a string for now, just because I think that's going to be easier for most people to sort of conceptualize, even though bytes are just as easy to use and go. Okay, so we have a file reader. Next, let's do a uh, handler for this, and that name wasn't bad, so let's just call this a func post handler. And this is going to be a function that's actually going to create our HTTP handler. So it's going to take in a slug reader and it's going to return an HTTP.handler func. And I'm writing it this way because this will allow me to input whatever slug reader I want and get the same post handler back every single time. And then I'm going to use that post handler to handle these requests to this particular endpoint. Okay, so we're going to return func wr. And then inside of here, we're going to say slug is going to be r.path value. This is the same code we wrote before, but I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it. Um, post markdown, comma error is going to be sl.read. And because this is inside of a closure, I can access that slug reader so I can use it inside of here. Um, and that's why we're you know writing this code the way we are, so that we can return a handler function that has access to the slug reader. Um, another way to do this would be to have a struct type and have a method on that struct that we would use as the http.handler func, um, but we're not going to do that in this particular approach. 
if error is not equal to nil, um, to do handle different errors in the future. For now, we're just going to do http.error w post not found http.status not found. So I'm just going to go ahead and just assume that if there's any error whatsoever, that it's just an invalid slug. It's not a real page. We don't have a blog post for it. And I'm going to return that. Okay. And if we get this far, we should have the post markdown. So we're going to go ahead and just do fump.fprint. And we're going to do w and post markdown. So I'm just going to take the contents of the post markdown. I'm going to write it directly to the response writer with this fprint. All right. If that is all working, um, we should just need to take this post handler and to um, go ahead and connect it up to this H or mux.handle func that we have. So let's go right here, and we're going to go ahead and do post handler, and we're going to pass in a file reader. Um, we could make this file reader a separate line. So fr is going to be file reader, and then we could pass in fr here. Um, but in this case, since the file reader doesn't really need any setup or anything like that, we could have just instantiated it inside of this inline. So either way is fine. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and just go back to the way it was. Okay, we need a test file to read from. Um, let's go ahead and create one. Let's code, stop the server, code, uh, how to boil eggs dot markdown. And then inside of here, I'm going to grab some sample markdown just to stick in there. So this is just a very simple recipe for boiling eggs. Um, not something most people would need, but we'll have it in there. And then let's go ahead and test this. So let's do go run main.go. I go back to the page. I have this how to boil an egg URL already in. So I'm going to go ahead and just reload it. And you'll see that we got page not found. So what did we mess up? Uh, I think I really need this. How to boil eggs. OK. How to boil eggs. And you'll see here that when we go to the correct URL, um, we get a blog post, and it's just got the contents of the markdown file. It's not being rendered as HTML or anything right now, but we are seeing the contents of that file being rendered to the screen. So I think that's a pretty good stopping point. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take all the work we have, and I'm going to go ahead and create a GitHub repo and just commit it all to it and push it so that anybody who wants to grab the code from this point on can. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the server, git status. Um, I have a bunch of like git shortcuts. So like git st is git status for me. So I'm going to git add a git commit dash m. Um, oh, I've got way too many autocompletes. Uh, what do we do here? We created a basic HTTP server that will look up blog posts via Let's say look at markdown files. And render their contents. OK, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and do hub create John Calhoun slash Golb. And that should use the GitHub API to create my repo. Then let's do git tag p1 and git push origin, main, and tags. And then let's open this up to make sure everything's there. And now if we go to the P1 tag, let's probably zoom this in a hair. Um, you'll see the P1 tag has all the source code from this lesson or this video. So if you want to go ahead and look at it all, you can. Um, and then I'll try to tag all these as I go so that you can just jump to whatever tag you want and just sort of see the source code. Um, that way you don't have to jump through uh, all the commits or anything like that. Okay, thanks for watching.